In this video, I would like to show you how you can easily get rid of duplicate files on a Linux computer on a number of different file systems. Um, so for this demo, I'll be doing this on my M.2 SSD that is running ext4, uh, but the same procedure also works on ButterFS and a number of other uh, file systems. When many people think of deduplication, they think of deleting copies, which would break their folder structure. Uh, but I'll show you how you can also do it by hard linking, sim linking, or uh, if you're on ButterFS, uh, ref linking your new files or duplicate files over to the originals. So for this, I'm going to use a program called rmlint. It's actually something that can clean up more than just duplicate files, for example, uh, broken links uh, and empty folders, so on and so forth. Usually the package is just called rmlint, so we can do a, you can install it. All right, in this case, I already have it installed. I know on Fedora, the package is also rmlint, so you would do sudo dnf install. Uh, and it's probably the same thing on Ubuntu. So once you have this, uh, you can just run it, but the default functionality is set to delete duplicate files. So if you actually look at the man page, uh, all the options here are outlined, um, and as long as what it can do, for example, as I said, duplicate files, non stripped binaries, broken sim links, uh, especially if you like copied old stuff over and they no longer work, uh, empty files, and, and a couple of other things. So if you scroll down, you can see uh, the type of exactly what should happen, so on and so forth. Um, algorithm is one that you can change. For example, if you enable Paranoid, it'll change the algorithm essentially. Um, the algorithm is basically to compare if two files are equivalent, the default method is take the hash of both files. And if the hashes match, you're probably equivalent. Um, if you enable the most paranoid option, you will end up basically checking almost bit for bit. Of course, this is more accurate, um, but it's also much slower. Something just like comparing two hashes is very quick and realistically, the chances are that you're gonna be perfectly fine. But if that's something you fear, you have a lot of files, you can enable paranoid or set the paranoid parameters. So dash P will do algorithm equals paranoid, which makes it uh, do a byte for byte comparison. Otherwise, pick one of the algorithms. Um, the next thing I want to mention about this program is the dash C parameter. Uh, one other thing I'd like to mention is setting the handler for how what should happen. Of course, there's a number you can do, um, and I'll show you the quick workaround for this. Um, but the default is remove. What this means is if a duplicate file or folder is found, uh, we're just going to completely delete the newer file. Uh, this is great if you only want to keep one copy, but in many cases, people have different, um, they, like, they, they might be able to want to access the file from two separate directories. And if you do this, you will have essentially deleted one of those copies. So something you can do instead is basically every file system at least sports hard linking uh, and better than that is sim linking. It's 2 a.m. and I feel like I have to mention this. For files, hard links would probably be preferable. The reason I said sim links is because you can also sim link folders, which cannot be done with hard links. Otherwise, hard links will probably be faster. Um, realistically, there's a nice table uh, online that you can use to compare what you should do. Uh, for files, I guess their suggestion to stick with hard, hard links is a good one. Um, it's just a habit of mine if I'm, because I usually link folders uh, to do ln s instead. Um, so yes, use their suggestion hard link, and if you can't hard link, then soft link. As it says, only use soft links as the last straw. All right, back to recording, Tony. Which is symbolic links. Um, why did I say better? Okay, of course there's different um, approaches, as it says. Hard linking will have the same inode. It'll essentially, when you open it, it'll go to the same position on the hard drive. Uh, sim linking is more flexible though. That's when you do ln space dash s, because symbolic links can also take care of directories. And finally, if you're on something like ButterFS, you can use reflink. Oh man, I'm on a roll today. I also didn't explain why reflinking might be preferred. Reflinking takes advantage of the COW or copy on write functionalities of the file system. This means that I can reflink two files to each other. Um, and the, at first, the second file will be the same as the first file, but I can actually open the second file and edit it independently of the first one. For example, say I have two text copies, right? Two copies of a book or something. Copy the first one to the second and it's reflinked. I can open the second one uh, and by default doesn't use any additional space. But the moment I edit it, uh, then that's where the copy on write kicks in 
and once you actually save it or you make changes, then the file will actually get copied over. So unlike hard links where the two files are permanently synced, and if you edit one, you end up editing the other because they point to the same inode, with ref links, they kind of exist as separate files. But as long as those two files are the same, it won't use additional space, but you can actually go and edit each file individually, and then it'll end up making the copy. I hope that helps. Reflink is even more practical because essentially it'll tell ButterFS, hey, point all of these to the same block. Um, there's one big caveat to reflinking, which is um, something that I only found out recently. If you have ButterFS backups, for example, I did backups through ButterFS snapshots, and you have reflinked files, and you, for example, then do a ButterFS defragment um, to, say, recompress all the files to, like, Z standard or something, anything that was reflinked gets broken. Um, and in that case, you, uh, my file usage went up by almost a terabyte because I had a number of reflinked but compressed, or sorry, uncompressed files that were then defragmented on a hard drive, which means that suddenly everything went all over the place and all the reflinks died. Um, so that's something you should keep in mind. There's also a number of examples um, that you can see just at the bottom. So uh, also the progress bar is useful, otherwise you will end up with thousands of lines of output when it's searching through files. And of course, yeah, you can read through this, limiting to sizes. Um, I like to use just the sh colon link. I will show you how that works. And that'll basically, in or in, it'll basically choose from ref link. If not, if the file system doesn't support ref links, it will try a hard link. And if it cannot do the hard link, then it will try the symbolic link. Essentially, it'll end up linking defaults together instead of the default of removing it. All right. So, for example, here I have a number of folders with some family photos, some videos I'm editing. Uh, let's see if we have any duplicates here. So, to do this, I'm just going to do rmlint, uh, and I'll use the progress bar, which is dash g, and then we can do dash c for the command, uh, and then sh colon link. And as I said, this will go through the hierarchy. Um, and here we go. It says, in a total of 4,160 files, uh, 512 are duplicates and 334 groups. So at first, it basically traverses all the files, then it pre-processes them, and then it matches to see if anything uh, is equal. So this is hashing, and then you compare all the hashes. Um, seven other suspicious items found, which may vary in size. Basically, this means that, hey, two things might have had the same checksum, but they're different sizes, which means they're probably not the same thing. It outputs both uh, like shell scripts and JSON files. So JSON files are useful if you want to save and load from within RMLint. Uh, the shell script, you just execute it to deduplicate stuff. So nothing has actually taken place on my system yet. Oh, this is probably not getting rendered on video. That is a progress bar. Uh, my apologies for this screen resolution quirk. Nothing has actually been modified. Basically, it's found what are duplicates, but it hasn't gotten rid of them. And to do that, we'll have to run this script. So if we open this and say less, uh, you can see that dun, da, 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 this file was auto-written. Uh, and if we scroll down, you can start to see. Here's the original. Oh, here's the original. Looks like this is one for a family photo from some slides I scanned. Uh, and this one is, is the original file is here. It's under photos slash archive. This is the duplicate for it. And the action that we're going to take is we're going to hard link it. So if I were to run this on my ButterFS partition, you would notice that instead of doing CP hard link, it would have done cp underscore ref link. But because this is ext4 and ext4 doesn't support um, sim linking, it's going to do a hard link. Basically, it goes from the uh, list that I showed. And in this case, this is absolutely valid. These are pp3 files produced by raw therapy um, when I, you know, mastered and exported the photos. And so those match. So you can see we also have some equivalent JPEGs, so on and so forth. So these are all going to get cleaned up. And in this case, it's going to hard link them. If notice how so if I didn't include the dot, the shell colon link, and we run this again, if I was to look at this, notice how the uh, commands now say remove command instead of uh, hard link. This means that the duplicates by default will get removed if you don't uh, specify the link feature. And of course, as I said, uh, doing it on ButterFS is even better. Um, of course, there's also like duper remove um, for, ah, I can't spell. Um, anyway, uh, there's there's a couple little programs for ButterFS, but RMLint seems to be pretty universal. So we will make sure that I will make sure that I don't delete something. All right, we're hard linking. Cool. And then all we do is we just run bash rmlint.shell, uh, and it says to execute, just type anything. So we can like press something, and boop, 
it'll keep these and it'll hard link the rest. And now we have just cleared some amount of disk space by essentially just linking multiple files. Of course, as a developer, I have a love-hate relationship with hard links, uh, and they're very useful, um, but also it takes a beautiful tree that is the file system and turns it into a graph with stuff going all over the place. And it removes the uh, shell script when it's done, so we can also just get rid of the JSON file. And that has been my quick overview for how you can easily get rid of duplicate files and other lint on your file system. Um, hopefully this has helped you, hopefully you learned something, and hopefully this will help you, you know, save disk space at least until hard drive prices come down. Uh, thank you, Chia miners. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully you found this useful. Consider liking and subscribing. Thanks.